Welcome back to Satisfactory. Today we're going to be looking at research, not into tier 7 and 8, which is the unlock, the big unlock, because it takes a thousand computers and a thousand heavy modular frames. We're going to be looking instead, if you look at the top right of the screen, expanded power infrastructure. So it's one of a few different things that we can actually research. If you have a look over here, there is jetpacks, which is cool. Um, they all require the same ingredients. They all require computers, motors, and heavy modular frames of different amounts. Monorail train technology, now that is a really good thing, but that's for high volume movement of stuff, and um, I'd rather have the ability to have scalable belts first before I have anything like that. So I want to do probably expanding power infrastructure first, followed by monorail, and then maybe jetpack and gas mask. Gas mask just lets you explore into those areas that are gassy. They do use up filters, however, but let's get started with the expanded power infrastructure. So that is the current milestone I selected. And there's a bunch of stuff in there that we actually need some more heavy modular frames. That's the first one done. We also need some motors and we need some computers. So why don't we just take a quick look around, see how our factory is actually doing. Uh, I have been actually making stuff between the episodes. Mainly just a little bit of scaling here and there, just increasing the rod production and stuff like that. So let me just pick up uh, pick up some steel beams. I think uh, I'm going to need some. Uh, yep, so here starting off with our heavy modular frames, that all our inputs are jammed. That's good. It's a good sign. It means that these should be continue being produced. They are. That is also very good. We're going to look at motors. So we can just pop down here onto this box. Uh, we've got 27 there. We're going to need a lot more of those. Is this constrained by anything right now? Uh, I've got a feeling it's constrained by the status, uh, or status, if I want to really annoy people. Um, you can see they're coming in here. There should be one every, roughly every 10 seconds or so. So clearly it's just limited by the speed uh, either of this factory itself, depending. So uh, that's stopped now. I really wish it'd be nice if you could have the factory have the same colours like Bottleneck in, in Factorio. So you could have a, like an obvious flashing light when its input is um, basically it's input constrained or whether it's output constrained, stuff like that. Right now, they're just green if there's power to them, I think. Oh, hang on, red. Uh, is that my power out? Oh, I'm just going to have their power. Yes, so actually, as I just demonstrated, they just go green and red when there's, there's power missing to them. So I need to go and put another coal generator in place. Now, the reason why I'm running out of uh, power is because I have oil refineries. The oil refineries take a huge amount of power and uh, we need to consistently keep on basically upping our power to supply more. I now have three of them. And because I don't need the rubber from them, that, that's going into a box. I've shifted them all to just producing plastic. Plastic gets produced into circuit boards. It also gets produced into computers. So all of it is being used uh, as quickly as we can. And as such, it covers up the power. So you can see all the way, all the way over there somewhere is our refinery. So I'm going to take you there next after I get this coal generator down. Look at how close that is. Okay, so when this thing spikes, it really does spike. And just to give you an idea of how many coal generators I'm up to. So it's 3, 6, 9, 10, 11, 12, uh, 13, 14, 15, 16 coal generators. Okay, and some of them still have level 1 belt between them. I should just upgrade those. Uh, not that it matters, should matter too much for these, but, you know, hey, uh, we just want to be consistent up here. I don't have enough room to put another uh, sort of set, set hmm, what's the right word, another set of uh, coal generators on this side, we're just constrained by this, uh, and I also went up these just to actually see what was on top of there. Um, over here, some of these trees you can't chainsaw down, annoyingly, uh, let me show you what I mean. If anyone knows how to get rid of them, I think we can just go with explosives eventually, but I don't think there's any other way, see this isn't a highlighting, and even if you, ooh, hang on, ooh, if I know, will that get rid of it? Oh, it will. Oh, never mind. Uh, all is forgiven. All is forgiven. How about you? Will you let me actually select anything? Uh, well, there's some leaves. Oh, all is forgiven. Good, good. I can keep on building that direction. Ah, oh, that's so nice. I couldn't actually find that in uh, actual testing. It's nice to actually see the things go my way for once when I'm actually on camera. So, let's get that back and we'll head back down to our base. A bit choppy uh, FPS up here because... The expanded power infrastructure that we've got at the top right of the screen, that's going to help us do a few things. One of which is uh, going to be a fuel generator. And that's going to need oil rather than um, the coal generators that are up there. So just as we've got coal coming down here, well, this stuff we're going to want to be using for more steel. 
However, uh, on the other side of the world, well, not the other side of the world, but a good half mile away is our oil pumps, and uh, we're going to probably generate some power over near there, split some off from the incoming plastic, because it is uh, it's backed up fully back to those pumps, and we'll get things going. So I'm going to jump forwards over to our computer area. Before I go over here, the status, um, or status if I want to annoy people, uh, are going to need to be a scale up a little bit. You can see here they're running at full speed. Uh, the inputs, however, not so well, not quite so much. Sometimes this actually doesn't provide enough, uh, and that's a bit of an issue because I want those status to go all the way over there and produce more motors. You can see we're short of motors at the top right of the screen. Well, I've got one constructor here, and let's just bring this up to two just so that everything is nice and scaled. So logistics, uh, let's just get another splitter here, and we want to put it on this belt, align that, and then we should be able to put this in here. Uh, are you going to feed stuff out? No. thought I'd put this on the belt. Um, will that you not go on the belt? Splitter? Okay. How about there? Just roughly? Will you go in there? Yes, you will. Good. Okay, and they will just want wire. Wire from the other side, just as we've done before here. Let's just get rid of these, get rid of these. And we want a couple of, well, at least one merger, but uh, we can get another one going if we want to. Uh, in case we want to scale up, or in case we want to just want to keep things to 90 degree bends, uh, we can do all of that. So one into there, one into there, and then one from there to there. Okay, job done. Ah, nearly. That's nice job done. And no power. Are you not? Oh, you have four already. Is there any connection? I can just grab you. Yep, please don't run out me out of power just again. Ooh, that just spiked really close. Yeah, okay. <laughs> Fine. So this should now be producing a wire. Yep. It'll combine with that one to produce double the rate. So this should now be the constraint, i.e. The, the number six per minute should come out of here. And how many oh, do we need over here for this thing? We need... Let's see, six per minute. Uh, we need ten per minute to be able to satisfy this. So, yeah, we don't quite have enough yet, but that's fine for now. At least this will get me a few more and we'll see how it actually grows during the episode. So heading back over to our computer area, then you can see I've got enough screws coming through, or at least the screws are running at full speed and they are nicely backed up. So, you know, they do stop moving at certain times, which is good. And over here are basically, yep, yeah, our reinforced iron plate is being produced into modular frames and both of those are backed up nicely as well. We want everything on the uh, on the inputs of machines to be backed up. We want to basically not be running out of stuff. And then we're just constrained by how many output machines we have, really. So over here, I've got those three oil refineries I mentioned. There they are. Uh, two of them are supposed to be for plastic. The other one's supposed to be for rubber. But right now, I've set it to plastic as well. And you can see right here, um, we've got plastic, which is now <laughs> backed up. And uh, we've got more plastic coming over here, which is going into here, which is just producing two circuit boards. So 10 per minute circuit boards. And what are we consuming per minute? Uh, we can consume 28 per minute. Well, that's because I've got this overclocker in there. So if I just take that back out for a second and let's see what this settles back down to once I take that out. Probably something like 15, I imagine, or 20 or something like that. Um, how are you doing? Uh, come on, figure it out. There we go, 18. <laughs> okay, so we've got 18 per minute we need, and we can basically produce it at 10 per minute, which leads us to the rather obvious conclusion that we need another one of these constructors. Uh, in fact, is it a constructor? It is not a constructor. It is a uh, assembler. Okay, so we want another assembler, and we'll do that probably about there, and then we'll hook everything back together with, uh, you know, a bit of sticky tape, a bit of chewing gum, and we should be okay to good oh no oh no it's one of these buildings oh oh i hate these buildings two input lines when you're trying to produce a stackable building inside of three by three is simultaneously hilarious and awful um it's just a complete horrible horrible way to actually uh trying to get everything together really you need more space if it went to four by four, uh, three by four that would probably be due and i think for, for future reference just in case you guys want to do this do do it a three by four for your buildings in future it gives you a little bit more space on the inputs and outputs 
uh, in my case, I'm just going to make this 3x4. Um, it is just much, much easier than having the nice... Whoops. Than having the nice... Um, nice stackable output. Uh, sorry, nice mm, symmetric output of a 3x3. So, yeah, let's just go for another wall. And you can see here, we can just shut this down for a second. Okay, and then we should be able to reline everything back up. So, let's just do that. Uh, let me just put them off together off camera and see if that... Uh, let's see if this 3x4 thing works. Again, with the problem with conveyor walls, they just will not connect to these that are clearly spaced far enough away for them to connect. Just doesn't work. Don't believe me? It irritates me every single time now. Look, watch. Oh, hang on. Uh, encroaching another clear. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Helps if I get rid of you. Uh, yeah, so here we go. That's on the inside. Connect to the wall. Nope. Will not connect to that no matter what I actually do. Uh, that's really annoying because that distance is absolutely perfectly fine for anything else that's that close. So for example, these same distance. Well, close enough. So yeah, that is annoying. So in the meantime, all I need to do is just leave the walls out, which is slightly annoying, but yeah, we can deal with it. And this actually is a much nicer layout as far as easy, easy to lay things out. We've got one splitter here. The second splitter, if I want this to feed out at ground level, needs to be uh, on the floor. Whereas this one needs, needs to be up a little bit just so I can get the belt into it and then nicely out into each of the machines. We could, of course, raise that up by one so they'd be symmetric. But then you'd have to get continue outwards outside with this belt at this height. Entirely up to you what you actually do for both of those. So on this, we're going to need power. Uh, yep, there we go. Is this out of power? I really hope it isn't. I just need to get power outside somewhere. Uh, yeah, you'll do. Okay, and that should be feeding them out. They should be coming out onto this belt and out to here, whereby we can get them where we got them before. So I'm just going to get them up onto a belt now. Um... Let's just say here, here. Should be able to turn the corner, and maybe one further away, like that. Ugh, still one further away. You know, one of these days I will get these. Really, really, game. Surely that should be able to turn that corner. Yes, you can. Finally, good. And this one just here has to go here. Uh, I think it's there. Will that turn a nice 90 degree? It will. And then we'll feed this back in. Good. So now we're making uh, basically circuit boards twice as quick as before. Basically 20 per minute as long as our input lasts. And it should last fine. And we're now in a 3x4 layout. So you can see we're now using plastics. So that's going to continue to make computers for me. Uh, there it goes. And we could probably even up this. But for right now that's quite safe as it is. And we should continue to get computers, which I've got 22 more. I'm going to need, uh, what is it, 50 more? And how many have I got in total? I have, oh, exactly 22. <laughs> Those were the only ones I had that I picked up. Fine, no problem. Uh, and everything else is working. And these, these belts are nice and neat. They make me feel nice and warm and glowing inside when you see those. Anyway, uh, yes, my oil refineries over here are going to be fine. But they're all three of them are devoted to plastic right now. I do have a box here that has the rubber in it. And we'll just basically empty this out and switch back to rubber as soon as we're sure that we have enough plastic coming through. And I was running out of uh, level one belt, clearly. You can see, see this is just a shortage here. Uh, but otherwise, fine. No problem. Uh, do we have a shortage on this side as well? Yeah, it looks like I was really running out of belt. But uh, other than that, is everything in here upgraded? Yeah, this is all fast. So that's everything at full speed, as far as that's concerned. Now, as you can see here, we seem to be a little bit short of steel pipe. And that's true in general for all of steel. We'll have a look at the top here. <clears throat> Excuse me. We have... Uh, where's my steel stuff? Uh, here's steel beams. 87 of them. Yeah, okay, but I'm using them really quickly. This container is done, I think. Yep, but you are done, which means I'm going to remove you now. Uh, general, once I've got the, uh, the, the the products being used constantly, I don't really need the um, the containers anymore. How about you? Are you done? You're also done. Okay, so this is looking like we're going to need uh, basically more production for a lot of stuff up here. Uh, why is that an invalid aim location? 
That should not be invalid aim. Um, could I just go upwards this way? Okay, how about now? And now can I grab you? Looks like I can. Okay, very weird. And in fact, I don't even need... <laughs> That's just a crazy thing to do. Now that the belt's gone, uh, we don't need any of that either. So we can just basically improve things a little bit here. Yeah, just tidy things up uh, somewhat. There we go. There we go. It's much nicer. Don't have that dog leg over the top of the, the hub. Okay, so we can see, clearly to see, we've got some uh, problems. In particular, steel beams. Problems with this one. Oh, steel ingots. Okay, so steel ingots to steel pipe. And steel ingots. Yeah, so it's almost like we're not producing enough steel. How we... Oh, I forgot about the speed of level 3 belt. This is going to be a hilarious level 4 belt. Um, <laughs> anyway, yeah, uh, we have our coal coming in. Coal's coming in fine. It's coming in slow, but constantly. And then output is steel ingots. How are we doing on the inside here? That's our iron, and that is not running at full speed. So we clearly have room for... Whoop, clearly have room for more uh, smelters upstairs. And now I need to remember how I actually got upstairs in this building. Ah, there we go. Is this just going to be an iron shortage? Let's just see, shall we? Um, let's take a look. Ugh, I hate these stairs. What's a jetpack? Right, so here's our output line, clearly. And it is an iron... Uh, mm, is it just coal? Um, yes, it's coal. Okay, and that should be a rather simple thing to actually upgrade. Uh, we've got all upgrades to level 3, have we? No. That should be a simple upgrade there. And um, there, if that's not already level 3. Um, should be. And then we just go backwards, basically, and get more of it being provided along the line. You can see right here, that looks like a level 1 conveyor. It's too slow. So I'm going to go and upgrade that, and let's see how well that does. And that's moving nicer. Remember, this is level 3 belt, so we could also put an extra floor in. I've upgraded the co uh, I think it was the iron one that actually wasn't upgraded to a, a level 3 lift. And you can see both of those are going up there. Obviously, we're getting half as much coal. You can see that quite visually as uh, iron. That's because I couldn't upgrade all of the actual coal all the way to the top. I'm just out of steel beams, basically. I could upgrade to about halfway up the ramp. Now, level 3 belt technically is a good way to travel fast. Only in a straight line, though. As soon as you come to one of these 90 degree corners, it's going to fling you off in the direction you were heading. So just bear that in mind. If you are going to use this as a transport system, you may want to put blocks at the end of these belts if you're going to do that. Anyway, as I was saying, uh, we've got the steel going up a little bit more, which is then getting to all of these other machines. So this should then be assembling fine, and we should start getting a few more steel beams. Good. All right. So uh, well, how are we doing for heavy modular frames? Uh, we're short of steel pipe now. Yep, that's the shortage stopping us getting more heavy modular frames. You can see at the top right though, we are, well, we do now have enough for that uh, that research product I need for you. In fact, I have 45 more for the next one. And I think that the next one is probably going to be, well, in fact, that we can just check. What's the, uh, what's the next objective for um, trains? That is 150. And I've got 101 on me and we've already counted in 75 so 25 more whenever we get the steel pipe for it will do for that uh, now we just have to get uh, 50 more motors or 54 more motors and about 28 more computers uh, the motors should be fairly good at being supplied if, as long as everything's being done here yeah 24 there um, we're still probably at capacity with how fast oh no wait, it's the steel pipes yeah, since I upgraded everything else, it's going to basically deplete all the steel pipes we can actually create. So what I think I'm going to do is create another floor up there on the steel uh, side of things, and we will go and get more steel produced that way. I'm not going to do it on camera because you've seen me put another floor in before, and uh, we can skip forwards hopefully until we have enough supply for us to complete this and get to tier 4 belts. 
And here's our extra floor, still with level 1 belts because I'm out of steel beams, basically, but uh, the smelter, the, sorry, the foundries are actually fairly easy to fit in 2x2 two two in a 3x3 three three room. Um, just remember that the um, the outputs are off-center for, for the output side, and the input side, uh, because they're so squat, they, they, they aren't very long, the actual things, you can get a good sort of setup just like this. So you just so you have an idea, and both of those could then go out the other side as you normally would do. So yep, both of those are good. And I had to come out here just to be able to get up through a set of stairs, easily anyway. We can always rebuild it later. Whoa, we're almost fall off there. And let's just pop down here and let's see how our steel beams are doing. Hopefully I've got a few more to be able to upgrade stuff. Yeah, 90, that'll do. Uh, and then everything else should continue to scale up from here. So we should end up with more uh, beams, more pipes. Yep, it's building up nicely. And then this is going to be encased beams. Yeah, that's all fine. So our status should continue being supplied. I can see at the top right of the screen, I only need 27 more motors. And I've already got the all the computers ready and all the heavy modular frames. So there's 19 of them. So very shortly now. And here's my final few motors, just to be able to drop them in. There it goes. Big red button. And now, and now we are able to basically generate more power, but also make more buildings. And also finish research uh, from the MAM for purple shards. So we could put that in if we wanted to. Uh, let's just do that, for example. Uh, yeah, so that's all stuff that we can actually afford. So why don't I just uh, go ahead and do that? Oh, I can't put them until it comes back. But we can afford all of that. Which sort of leads us towards looking at, well, what does it actually take to, uh, to build? Um, well, we want basically level 4 belt. And we've got to figure out which machine it actually needs for that. Ingredients, level 4 belt and everything else. So come over Mark 4. It's just in case the industrial beams. Now we've got some of those already. Uh, so that's fine. We will need more, but that's steel constrained. Conveyor lift mark 4 is also steel beams. That's also good. Um, late game, this is why concrete is so required. And we have concrete, just one, basically one, one factory up there right now. And that's only got level 1 belt coming out of it as well. So we can just scale that up and put a mark 2 minor on it. But that's the level 4 belt available. Let's take a look at power. We now have the ability to basically do a fuel generator. Now, fuel generator outputs three times as much power. You can see at the very bottom right there. 150 megawatts versus 50 megawatts. Okay, it's stuff that we can build. We need five supercomputers. Oh, we need five computers, not supercomputers. Uh, we need 10 motors and we need 25 cable and we can make a fuel generator. They are huge. <laughs> they are really really big so you're going to want a well first of all a refinery uh, which is also going to be other stuff you didn't need to make and also then a fuel generator so we may want to do that at the other end so let's just look at what a refinery actually costs us uh, that's eight motors as well it's going to be some steel pipes and more cables so we just basically need um we need motors 18 of them at least whoops Oh, I'll show you how large it is. Yeah, it's gigantic, this thing. It's square, uh, but it consumes, you can see, pretty much a 3x3 three three itself with nothing, with no room for any inputs or outputs. So it'd be more like a 5x3, even if you put it in the building. I'm not going to put this one in the building. It's going to sit outside because it's going to sit at the very other end and produce some more power. Uh, pretty much the equivalent of three coal generators. Uh, we could obviously put a couple of these down outside as well, but that's going to require me to get basically some more motors and some, some supercomputers and cables and other bits and pieces. So let me just move to the other end where the oil pumps are, and I'll bring you back then and see if we can get uh, at least one of these down, if not two. Here we are on our wonderful beach, pristine, you know. Not ruined by me or anyone else yet. And we've got our belt of oil coming all the way over here. Thankfully, no pipes, so no leakage into the ocean. Um, the, well, the, the very, very shallow, shallow, shallow river ocean because the developers didn't have swimming in the game. Anyway, um, we've got it all coming from over there. There's two oil pumps over there. So right here, we can probably split this off and decide to make some fuel. So we want an oil refinery and we can just put that wherever we like. But uh, we need to kind of split off 
here, so why don't we just uh, send it sort of this direction? That'll do for now. And we want a splitter. Was that really the noise that makes? That was terrifying. <laughs> terrifying, even. Terrible and terrifying. Uh, so, yeah, we can put a splitter on this belt. And then we can just put that belt sort of coming into here. There we go. And you need some power. You would need to produce fuel for me. And off it goes. And we're also going to then get fuel out of this side. Now, I did already make some by handcrafting it. Got some in my inventory. So we're going to go and make a fuel generator. And it's huge. It's huge. Uh, we're going to need to just put them somewhere. So let's spin this around. Uh, we could put basically a grid down over here. Where it certainly is possible. But for now, we can just put it down, I think, here. And we'll just get one up and running. Because uh, I don't have any resources for any more. Let's just be clear. Uh, and then we just need to hook that up to everything else. So hook you up to there. All right. And I'll just load this up with fuel. And you can see already that's a big jump in our power by comparison to one more coal generator. And everything is running happily. So uh, what I want to just see is just how much of this uh, are we going to back up? So 37.5 a minute. And how much do you use? Uh, do you tell me how much you use? Um, that would be nice if you did. Five seconds. So it uses one every five seconds. So what's that, like 12 a minute? Yep, so that should be enough for three. This should be enough for three um, fuel generators, which is pretty good because these consume power. Um, these consume 50 megawatts. So it will be, so three, so that's 450 megawatts minus 50. So 400 megawatts for each sort of setup. One of these, three of these. And that's going to be pretty good. And to get back, of course, this is all level three belts. So uh, aside from me uh, having problems here, when we get to a, like a 90 degree corner, I can run back really quickly, ish, and uh, get back to the base. So yeah, that's pretty good so far. So we're now on to level four belt, and we're on to um, basically fuel generators rather than coal generators, or at least we'll probably end up replacing one with the other. We have three fuel, well, we have three oil spots over there. So, oops, that's what I was talking about when you get to a corner. And we have, the, that's, uh, I think there's three coal spots as well, but the, you know, the coal, just isn't as easy or at least it's far more space intensive to get generators up and running okay so now one thing i wanted to do then if we now have mark 4 belt available i don't need mark 3 anymore which means that steel belt box and um sort of assembly machine we don't need anymore and that means there'll be more um to go around if we send it to the other side where the in case the industrial beams are made, being made so let's just go and finish that off so up here one other thing i wish as well these aren't connected to anything there is no fuel in them they produce clouds you can actually just turn this off okay and turn it back on and now it turns off and it's nice and quiet don't know why that happens just a bug i'm sure <laughs> so here is our steel beams and if we wanted to we could leave them there otherwise we just disconnect this Okay, and all of our steel beams will go this way and into the, basically, the thing that produces steel beams on this side, which then goes in here and produces encased beams, encased industrial beams, which goes out. And normally, we'll go down to our modular, um, uh, our modular frame production, the, encased, the heavy modular frame. Now, right now, I've turned it off. Uh, one, this is one that lets me just get a bunch of stuff for level 4 belt. Cool. But also, it uh, basically means I don't really need heavy heavy modular frames too much right now because I'm saving up other stuff in the factory. So I've turned it off just by disconnecting this one piece of belt here. And that's going to be fine. How, mu how many heavy modular frames do I actually have? I've got 12, so I've got pretty much 99 heavy modular frames. Uh, yeah, so why don't we just... Uh, that that uh, thing should be back. That rover should be back. Let me just change milestone. And uh, monorail. Um, we need 150. Okay, we got 100. So I'm going to put in all the 100. I'm going to put in whatever computers I have. Uh, 26. 
And motors. Do we have any motors? Probably not. I was probably... Uh, yeah, we're probably just short of motors. So I'm not going to be able to get to that this episode, but next episode we should be able to unlock trains. Uh, this episode we've unlocked Mark IV belt, we've unlocked fuel generators, and put them down and upgraded everything uh, to... Well, we've not upgraded the belts yet, but uh, we've upgraded everything to be, uh, to be doing them. And uh, we'll see you next episode. So I hope you enjoyed the episode. We've got a, a bit upgraded, not a huge amount, but of course right now it's quite expensive to upgrade stuff. But really we're working on the rest of the technology in this uh, tier 6, is it? Yes, tier 6. And we'll get through those and then we'll get to the actual tier 7 and 8 unlock. But that will take a little bit of time. In the meantime, of course, we can scale up. Uh, the other thing that uh, we could, do, of course, do... In fact, yes, I could do that, actually. Uh, let's just switch milestone to tier three purple shards if you ever come across any of these uh it's worthwhile to be able to dump them uh in and get five uh power shards back out so it's one for the first for the green power slug two for the yellow five for the purple and they're quite rare and hard to find so it is it is uh it's not as easy as you might think there we go and that's our purple power shards cool all right, if you enjoyed the episode, give it a thumbs up. We'll see you next episode for some more satisfactory. Give it a subscribe, like, share, if you normally would. And, of course, you can indeed click on the like button. Uh, not, not the like button, the bell button, if you want notifications for more episodes. Otherwise, put your comments down below, suggestions for other people. Have we had seen a few suggestions from people who are already at Mark IV and running ahead of me here with this stackable? Uh, they were talking about the sort of bottlenecks encountered at level 4 belts. In that if you... Throttle, if you throw, fully throttled one building with level, level four belt, uh, basically it ran out. Um, then you need to basically have another input and output. We will get to that as well. But remember, these buildings will get much taller when you get to, to, to the sort of point of level four belt. Each floor only has a certain amount of room on it. So level four belt is... Um, it is 480. So it's not quite double, but it's, uh, it's sort of... Um, yeah, it's, it's four times... Uh, level two belt so so level three belts the odd one out but yeah that's fine uh in fact 60 yeah it is the odd one out never mind uh level four is lots better so we will be using that upcoming and i'll probably put down a machine to make it dedicated uh split it off from the uh, in case industrial beams that's going to that so i can re-enable this and then we will just have a box i can just pick up mark four belt whenever i want to Anyway, that's going to be the next episode. Hope you'll join me for that. And as always, guys, thanks for watching.